Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Launched in 300 pieces for 2011, this is the Harry Winston Z6 Black, a remarkable alarm with minute repeater tone and cadence. It's a timepiece that rivals an offshore with complications worthy of a high-end Renault Papi Audemars Piguet, or dare I say it, one of the most complex of Patek Philippe offerings. High horology movement with high horology finish in a case designed by the great Emmanuel Get, he the father of the Royal Oak Offshore. This is a timepiece that has a tangible link to the Harry Winston Opus series as the designers of this movement, Chronode, handled the work on both the IWC you see Sidereal Scafusia, reference 5041, and yes, the Harry Winston Opus 10. So the DNA and patrimony of this one impeccable. But the mouth run it over. Let's hear its sound, because this is a watch that can speak for itself. Note the on-off complication for the alarm, and the fact that on the case back, the alarm on-off is controlled by a little column wheel. Also, listen carefully. You can hear both the chime and the regulator in the background. It uses an inertial regulator, just like a minute repeater, to keep it from ringing like a Memovox or a Volcane Cricket. Instead, this watch chimes at a leisurely cadence with sustain and ring and volume. It has all of those colorful qualities that we love in chiming watches, not alarms, repeaters. It even features a black polished striker visible on the dial side. So now you've seen the alarm and it's on off. We've talked a little bit about the background of the watch. Let's talk about the fit. Fit usually comes first, but in this instance I've made some exceptions. The watch is 44 millimeters in diameter. It's composed of DLC blackened zallium. Zallium is a zirconium and aluminum alloy that has the feel of titanium on the wrist, but it's also wonderfully resistant, being exceptionally hard. It's a good backing for DLC because DLC works best on a hard surface. As hard as it is, it can't have the material beneath it collapsing. That's how it scratches and cracks. This is a perfect match, a light and hard case material with a hard outer coating. 44 millimeters is the diameter. The watch isn't particularly thick. 13.6 millimeters thick means it's a good solid millimeter thinner than a Royal Oak Offshore. Lug to lug, a couple of ways to measure this watch, but 51.6 is how I measure it. It's important to understand that back before floating lugs were cool at De Bethune, Harry Winston was doing it. These lugs do have built-in articulation and they can conform to your wrist to a degree, so the fit's going to be very individual. The strap itself is broad. It's navy blue. It's a semi-gloss, large rectangular scale alligator leather. It has a sheer side, calfskin underlay, and it's matched by a blackened double deployant clasp, which as you can see is Harry Winston branded and features twin trigger release. So this one's going to inspire confidence on the wrist. It can't accidentally pop open. It's a substantial piece too, although very light as it is composed of the same combination of titanium and stainless steel that you often see on small swing arm deployment clasps. The titanium makes it light, the small moving parts of stainless steel make it strong. Now you'll also note that the watch features a rather baroque case band. It's inspired by the arches at the New York flagship store of Harry Winston. So that's what's going on on the crown side, and the crown guard structures are designed to evoke those arches. But you'll also appreciate the fact that the trigger to activate or deactivate the alarm is seamlessly hidden. Let me regain my focus, it's seamlessly hidden in the shear guard structure that flanks both sides of the crown. So that's a handsome and efficient arrangement as it doesn't interrupt the lines of the case and it also allows you to operate the function without any complication. That's the best complication. You can see that the watch features a number of different registers. There's the on-off for the alarm, there is an AM-PM, and you'll see how that works in a minute, on the main dial. That's your time. You can also see there's a constant seconds dial in the form of a shuriken or a ninja throwing star. That's one of the other Harry Winston corporate symbols. There's an AM-PM display at what would conventionally be 2 o'clock dedicated to the alarm, and you can see that there's a double sapphire disc twin digital alarm that you can actually set, and you could set it in either direction, which is something that not every alarm watch gives 
gives you. You can see how it steps between five minute increments. So this is one of the most accurate alarms you will ever encounter. I should also mention and watch that AM PM indicator because it does give you an AM PM distinction for the alarm hour. You actually have the ability to set this alarm to activate itself at any point in a 24 hour period. So it does know the difference between 12 noon and 12 midnight. Most alarms do not have that feature. So this is a very sophisticated alarm, not just on off, but with a true 24 hour and five minute interval setting system. Also, once again, you can set it in both directions. Now the dial is layered, the dial is loomed, the dial is spectacular. This was back when the Harry Winston Z series felt like miniature versions of the Opus rather than phone it in type annual debuts there for the sake of being there. Uh, I'm sorry to say that the Z series is far less ambitious these days, generally being reduced to dual times and oddball time displays. This was a true high horology complication with finish to match. On the case back, built and finished by Chronode of Le Loque, Switzerland. This is the Harry Winston HW1010, 45 joules, manual wind, 72 hour power reserve. You can see that it has two mainspring barrels and the two mainspring barrels are wound using a common crown and you can see how that system works. It has the column wheel for activating or deactivating the alarm. It has a full balance bridge to brace the balance and increase the rigidity of the movement. It oscillates at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It is certified as a Swiss chronometer by Chronode before it's delivered to Harry Winston. And you can see that it features black black polished screw heads and I'm emphasizing that by turning it flush to the camera but it also features fat mirrored anglage and you can see that on the edge of every bridge as well as within the jewel countersinks this is a movement with the heart of an opus series it has the finish of a Vacheron, an Audemars Piguet or yes even a Patek Philippe every detail is excruciatingly doted on by high horology finisher who work on some of the top machinery in the business. Chronode is top shelf. Jean-Francois Mahon, the man behind the Opus 10, also helped to design the Sidereal Scafusia for IWC and worked for Schaffhausen for many years as their in-house complications ace, and he designed this. It even features stop seconds. So although the shuriken isn't exactly a good way to mark the seconds on the dial side, nevertheless, it does have that refinement. This watch is simply groaning with them. A true high horology complication and a rarity. If you're looking to spend Royal Oak Offshore or Hublot Big Bang Unico money, think again. Think Harry Winston. This needs to be on your shopping list. Live the dream and think differently on the watch box. Harry Winston Z6 Black. Just a little bit of loom.